Good morning. Uh, I think, is Mosiana here? Morning, everyone. <laughs> All right, just killing time right now. Just waiting for our dear youth. <laughs> Hi guys, uh, good morning church. My name is Mosiana Sikisa. Today our youth welcome you to our Sunday worship. The name that we have given our youth is Selah. Selah appears in the Bible at least 74 times and has different meanings. But as a youth, we come together and define Selah as to pause and praise. So today as we listen to Pastor DePano's message, our youth invites you to pause. Pause the stress that can be occurring in your life. Pause the business that is to come in the next week. Pause and give praise to the Lord Almighty for he has given us another day to live and to love. Thank you. All right, good morning, church. So this is our Selah worship team. Um, so we are about to start our praise and worship. So if you all would like to stand with us as we begin our first song, uh, thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me.
God, we just thank you so much for bringing us here to worship you. Um, and as we sing our last song, we just ask you to just feed each and every person here, that you may guide and protect them and help them feel wanted, Lord, in whatever they may be going through. We thank you for all the blessings you've given us. In your name we pray, amen. Oh, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard a tender whisper of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm Never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Oh, I've seen many searching for answers far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers. Only you provide because you know just what we need before we Say your word, you're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. It's who I am. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. So undeniable, I, I can hardly speak. Peace so unexplainable, I, I can hardly speak as you call me. Deeper still as you call me. Deeper still as you call me, deeper still into love, 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 you're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You are perfect in all I love your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. You are perfect.
perfect. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To us, you're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Amen. Please bow your heads and close your eyes as we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us together as one congregation to praise your name. Lord, we ask you to bless those who are mourning because of the loss of loved ones due to mass shootings. Please protect schools so children feel safe and help minorities stop facing discrimination. Lord, please bless the children and parents of our congregation as we glorify and worship you, God. Help us all get home safely today, and in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Will all the children please gather to the front? Okay, good morning, everybody. Happy birthday, guys. Is it anybody's birthday here? Oh, it's almost your birthday. But today is a birthday that we can all celebrate. Everybody sitting in this church right now can celebrate this day, too. It's a day that's festive, kind of like Easter. Does anyone know what we celebrate on Easter? remember but it's either Jesus's death or Jesus's resurrection you're right it's Jesus's resurrection it's also a day that we can celebrate like Christmas which is Jesus's birth so today is Pentecost Sunday does anyone know what we celebrate on Pentecost Sunday okay so today marks the day of the birth of Christian churches which is a day that everybody sitting in this church can celebrate today as well. So on this day, um, in the Bible, it speaks about everybody who proclaimed their loyalty to God and also um, gathered together kind of like we are gathered here too. And they worshiped no matter the the different languages they spoke. And it's kind of like what we do, too. We are gathered, despite the different um, ethnicities we are, and we do this once a month. Um, So that is the end of today's lesson. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, thank you. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciples must deny themselves and take up their
Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciples must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Our scripture reading for today is from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be the tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all of these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them? in our own native language. Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya, near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. 
amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said they've had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all the people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will see dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above the signs of on earth below, blood and fire, and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned into darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord, and everyone who calls out the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen. Good morning, church. So before I offer this song, I just want to... Uh, how about we give a hand to our youth for leading us in worship this morning? Um, I think it's been, it's been quite a while since our youth have led in service, uh, led us in a worship service. So they do work hard, and it is nice to see them participating in service. Uh, so I hope that you continue to support them as we develop the, the new leaders of our church, because um, we're looking at them right now. So thank you.
Thanks, Simon. I believe it's providential that on this day of Pentecost, our young people are leading us in worship. I think this is from above, showing our faith community that God is not done with us yet and that we all need to invest in our young people to let them know we're behind them, that we love them, and that they can lead others to faith in Jesus and that they can be the church and that this faith community on Grand Avenue will be just fine in their hands. Amen? Amen. 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 Also, I'd like, to, uh, I'd like to encourage our young people. We've got a praise band that we can, uh, that can be the anchor of a, a new, maybe contemporary worship ministry. We, we've got the talent. And I also want us to thank Deborah Gillen for, for our um, Pentecost arrangement on the altar. And Kathy Boffman, I'm sorry, Kathy. Where's Kathy? Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. What a special day to be gathered together. I see many of you got the memo about wearing red. It is Pentecost after all. The most common way people give up their power is by thinking they don't have any. Alice Walker. In 1908, the Black Hawk Generating Station was constructed in southern Wisconsin. It started off as a coal-fired power plant. Eventually, it generated electricity with power supplied by natural gas. Then, in 2010, let's see, do the math, 2010 minus 1908, how many years is that? 102? So after that time, the plant was decommissioned. The end, right? Wrong. Beloit College took over the Riverside Power Plant and turned it into a student union building focused on recreation and wellness. Now the building that you see on the screen generates physical fitness, personal connections, and healthy living. Picture this, a suspended three-lane running track runs through every section of the building. The structure houses a fitness center and a recreational gym. There is an eight-lane competition swimming pool and an indoor turf, next slide, indoor turf field house. On top of this, the student union includes a coffee shop, student lounges, club rooms, conference center and auditorium, plus numerous spaces for conversation, collaboration, and study. So college-bound kids, check out Beloit College and enjoy this once proud power generation station converted into something as special as the pictures show us. And what is the facility called? The powerhouse. So apt, right? A former power plant is now creating a whole new kind of energy for Beloit College and the community around it. New energy was also discovered on the day of Pentecost. The followers of Jesus were gathered in Jerusalem to celebrate a Jewish holiday 
called Pentecost or the Festival of Weeks. It was a harvest festival, but also a time to give thanks for the gift of the law to Moses on Mount Sinai. The law was, in many ways, their historic power plant. But then, when the Holy Spirit entered a house full of Jesus' followers, it created a new kind of powerhouse. It filled the apostles with new life, enabling them to communicate with a diverse group of people, speak boldly to a large crowd, and fulfill the prophecy of Joel. The Spirit generated a more energetic and vibrant community of faith, which was connected in new ways with the surrounding community. The book of Acts tells us that when the day of Pentecost had come, the followers of Jesus were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire filled, uh, appeared among them and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. What's happening in that room on Pentecost is different from Glossolalia, where people started speaking in languages other than their own and that people could not understand. What was happening in Pentecost was that followers of Jesus were able to communicate with the rest of the world beyond anybody's imagination. Glossolalia is about not being able to understand the Spirit. Pentecost is about being able to connect with the diversity and wide variety of God's people in ways that they understand. The Holy Spirit is an energy source that gives us courage to connect with neighbors in life-giving ways. This Pentecost power isn't found primarily in programs or, or policies, but in the Holy Spirit of God. And it helps us bring warmth and light to the world. Spirit is the power of life that is in you says Presbyterian author Frederick Buechner. When your spirit is unusually strong, the life in you unusually alive, you can breathe it into other lives, become literally inspiring. That's exactly what God did on Pentecost, God breathed and continues to breathe into creation, says Buechner. God's breath filled the apostles and inspired them, giving them the ability to go out and speak about God's deeds of power to the Jews from every nation who were living in Jerusalem. The apostles were suddenly able to speak in a variety of languages. And the people were amazed 
and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. In other words, they're drunk. The purposive nature of the gift of tongues given at Pentecost is demonstrated by this subtle yet substantial shift in location Luke makes in verse 5. Suddenly the walls of that secluded upper room disappear from Luke's text. Somehow, the Pentecost miracle is now taking place out in the open, in the public marketplace. The church, you and me, has been invested with the power of this Holy Spirit so we may speak about one thing, salvation through Jesus Christ. It's in verses 22 to 24 that Peter gives his first public witness about that message, the person and power of Jesus Christ. Being a Christian is about following and patterning your life around Jesus Christ. The gift of the Pentecost bears its first fruit in the church's first public testimony about salvation through Christ crucified. It's kind of hard to claim you're Christian when you're not eager to talk about what Jesus has done to you. And wanting to share that with others. And such spiritual power is needed today. If we are going to be a part of a church that brings life, joy, and hope in the world. We need this spiritual power. I don't know, but if you read the news again today, there's been another slew of mass shootings. I'm tired as I know you are, about hearing of people, children, being gunned down. And we as the church are called to give witness to the life-giving spirit of God. Such spiritual power is needed today. And Peter told the crowd that God's spirit was going to change their lives for the better. He said, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions. We can be part of the Christian way by turning our church, Santa Ana United Methodist Church, into an energy powerhouse. We don't believe in a pattern of, that we so, see too often in churches. They begin, they thrive, they plateau, they begin to decline, and then they close their doors. I want you to join me in rejecting that pattern as being true for Santa Ana United Methodist Church. And the only way that can happen is, if we, is, is when we are connected 
with the life-giving and powerful spirit of God. We can do this. And when we do this, we open ourselves to the Holy Spirit, an energy source that gives us both the courage and the ability to connect with people around us in life-giving ways. And how do we do it? Connect with God in prayer. Church, do you spend time in prayer outside of Sunday morning or Sunday afternoon? Wrap yourself in praise and thanksgiving. You want the power of God? Develop a prayer life and surround yourself with praise and thanksgiving. Secondly, always remember God while doing your chores for better spiritual connection. Think of God when you rise up in the morning, when you're preparing breakfast. Think of God when you're driving to school, to work. Think of God when somebody tries your patience. Think of God when you see a needy person on the corner, street corner, or on an off-ramp, or on an on-ramp. Always remember God while doing your chores throughout the day for better spiritual connection. Third, Meditate on the Word of God. How many of you have Bibles at home? Is that about it? Let me see the hands. All right. When was the last time you opened them? This morning? Pray, yesterday? Praise God. If you have not opened them in a long time, develop the habit of reading the Bible, if possible, daily. You want the power of God in your life? Meditate on the Word of God. Fourth, don't only meditate. Be a doer of the Word of God. And you can do that 90% of the time when you serve others. Don't get caught up in this me first culture. You will feel the power of God in a life of service. And last but not the least, have faith that God is by your side. Cultivate that and you will sense the power of God with you. And you will not be fearful. Instead, you will be bold to share Jesus with others, to let others know you follow Jesus. You don't have to apologize for being a Christian any longer because God's Spirit resides in you. Brian D. McLaren, Christian thinker, author, and activist, had this to say about the church and the powerhouse it once was and could be again. Quote, in the millennia since Christ walked with us on this earth, we've often tried to box up the wind of the spirit in manageable doctrines. We've exchanged the fire of the spirit for the ice of religious pride. We've turned the wine back into water and then let the water go stagnant and lukewarm. We've traded the gentle dove of peace for the predatory hawk or eagle of empire. When we have done so, we have ended up with just another religious system as problematic as any other too often petty, 
argumentative, judgmental, cold, hostile, bureaucratic, self-seeking, an enemy of aliveness. In a world full of big challenges, in a time like ours, we cannot settle for a heavy and fixed religion. We cannot try to contain the spirit in a box. We need to experience the mighty rushing wind of Pentecost. We need our hearts to be made incandescent by the Spirit's fire. End of quote. There is only one way to live out the gospel of our risen Christ. And that is as a powerhouse follower of Christ. As a powerhouse church. Lukewarmness is not an option. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Give to be blessed. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not bear open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. Giving is not just about sacrifice. It is God's way of virtually introducing us into the flow of sowing and reaping that is the current of his creation. Participate in the harvest that God has for us by sowing your gifts with him today.
Will you give and take away every joy and every pain? Through it all, you will remain over it all. On the mountains, I will bow my life. In the valley, I will lift my On the mountains I will bow my life to the one who sent me there. In the valley I will lift my eyes to the one who sees me there. When I'm standing on the mountain I didn't get there on my own. When I'm walking through the valley I know I am not alone. You're God of the hills. Brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, it's time for us to join in our uh, uh, Thanksgiving communion. I invite you to join with me. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the good Lord. Let us, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, our Alpha and our Omega whose strong and loving arms encompass the universe. For with your eternal word and Holy Spirit, you are forever one God. Through your word, you created all things and called them good. And in you, we live and move and have our being. When we fell into sin, you did not desert us. You made covenant with your people, Israel, and spoke to the prophets and teachers. In Jesus Christ, your word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymns. Holy, holy, holy God. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is Jesus Christ who called you Abba Father. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embrace the people as your own and fill them with the longing for a peace that would last and for a justice that would never fail. In Jesus' suffering and death, you took upon yourself our sin and death and destroyed their power forever. 
you raised from the dead this, na- this same Jesus, who now reigns with you in glory, and pow- poured us your Holy Spirit, and making us the people of your new covenant. On the night before the meeting with death, Jesus took bread and gave thanks to you. Broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup and gave thanks to the disciples and said, Drink from this in all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant and poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Together, Christ Christ has died, Christ Christ is risen, risen. Christ Christ is coming again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts that in the breaking of this bread and the drinking of this wine, we may know the presence of the living Christ and be renewed as the body of Christ for the world, redeemed by his blood. As the grain and grapes, once dispersed in the fields, are now united on this table in bread and wine, so may we and all your people be gathered from every time and place into the unity of your eternal household and feast at your table forever. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Let us offer together the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As our Tongan friends offer uh, their beautiful and heavenly music, uh, I invite you to come forward and receive a cup with a wafer. And as we have been practicing and doing, uh, return to your seat. Don't open the, don't consume the wafer and the cup yet. We will all do it together. Um, Come and Offer your palms open like this, and our pastors will place the cup and wafer in your hand. Come and receive the grace of God.
If you would remember to bring your cup out with you and throw it in the trash can on your way out, we sure would appreciate it. It's time for some announcements. Let's uh, put up that first announcement slide. Yes, uh, we need to thank some special people for a really special um, culture festival last, last Sunday. So uh, leading this special group is, as I call your name, I'd like you to stand up. Alpha is our Culture Fest chair, uh, assisted by Miguel, Mafi, Deborah, June, Jenda, Fannery, and Carrie. Can we show them our appreciation? Thank you. Until next year, I heard we're going to hold it on a Saturday next year. Next uh, announcement. All right, don't you go home or don't you go anywhere after church. We have our taco fundraiser uh, to help raise funds for uh, Marvelini Vasquez's uh, niece who is undergoing cancer treatment. Pastor David, how much is uh, the plate per plate? Each taco plate is $5. If you want to give more, they will not say no. All right, so uh, next slide. Next Sunday will be our final day of collecting uh, shampoo and lip balm that will go towards hygiene kits that will be assembled during annual conference. So if you feel the spirit nudging you to bring uh, shampoo, bottles of shampoo, regular size, not travel size, regular size, shampoo and lip balm, uh, next Sunday is your very last chance to do so. Next slide. We are in the midst of a table and chair uh, campaign. Uh, you all know we've been together a long time. Well, 10 years. You know the state of our tables and chairs. And we need to start replacing them. So one table will cost you $100 and one chair is 30. Again, if you so, feel so moved by the Spirit, please consider donating towards our table and chair uh, fundraising drive. Next slide. Next Sunday is a big Sunday for us again. We will be hosting the California Pacific Filipino Caucus in its observance of Philippine Independence, Independence Day, and we will host a fiesta beginning at three. Uh, Jesse Rojas is heading our local host committee. If you want to help, see Jesse. Jesse, wave your hand. So they, Jesse's over there. If you want to help out, look up Jesse. Next slide, and let me bring up Doug Gillen, our fireworks man. All right, Doug. Oh, here we go again. Yay. Kaboom.
Thanks, Doug. Is there another announcement slide? All right. Um, I'll, a month from now, our district superintendent will be paying us a visit. In fact, she will be speaking during our joint communion service. So I hope you will mark your calendars and let's give our DS, Sandy Olwine, a rousing uh, Santa Ana welcome and uh, host her through a fellowship luncheon. That's July 3 at 10. Is that the last one? One more. Or one more, two more. Well, two more. All right. This is second to the last. On July 3, uh, we will also honor the class of 2022. I already know of at least two or three uh, members of our community who uh, are members of graduating class of 2022. I know there are a lot more. We need their names. We need the name of the school they graduated from and any honors or special awards that they receive. So please have that information in the church office by, I can't even read that far. June 26th. June 26th is the last Sunday uh, that you can turn in that information. Okay, last slide. We are having Vacation Bible School and uh, that's July 5 to 9. Children, youth, young adults, adults. So if you want uh, further details, see um, Cecil Arceo, our Director of Children's Ministries, uh, who is coordinating this whole uh, activity. All right, we are ready for our closing song. Let me turn it over to our youth praise team. Thank you. All right, um, before we close out with our final song, I just wanted to make one last announcement. Um, Selah Youth meets every Sunday from three to four. Um, sometimes we'll start at two, depending on when our last fellowship closes out, which is our Tongan fellowship. Uh, we wait to the end so that everybody can try and make it. Um, so I'd love if you guys would reach out to your children, to your youth. Um, kids who are in sixth grade and up. Um, I'm not going to put a cap on that because our young adults come to our youth as well. Um, but I just wanted to let our parents know that our youth, we meet every Sunday from three to four for just an hour, um, just to fellowship with each other and um, to build our relationship with God, which is what our goal is every single day. Um, so with that, we thank you for allowing us to lead you in worship, and we'll close out with our last song. Thank you. You guys can join us by standing. We sang it earlier, so if you remember the words, the words will be on the screen, so feel free to sing along with us. Oh, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Oh, I see many searching for answers far and wide but i know we're all searching for answers only you provide because you know just what we need before we say a word or a good good father it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you, 
It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To us, you are perfect. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. a new week. May you experience God's presence. May you feel God pouring out the Holy Spirit over your heads and your thoughts and the words of your lips over your hearts and your feelings and emotions and your compassion for all others and over your hands and your feet as you put into action all that God commands you. During this week, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each of you. Amen.
Thank you, Richard. The taco fundraiser is in the fellowship hall. See you all there.